Let's talk about hiking, friends. Let's do, because, like, I'm dying to do it right now. I know. I am. I mean... That wasn't, like, let's talk about hiking, comma, friends. <laughs> it was, let's talk about hiking, friends. Oh. People we've met on the trail. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Also, I know my grammar. <laughs> <laughs> Things that will not be revealed in later episodes. I love hiking friends because... <laughs> Me too. You know, it presents an opportunity for just, you know, being cordial and kind and... Right? And inclusion. Yeah. And it's not like it forces inclusion. No. It gives you an opportunity for inclusion. It does. Because I do feel like there are some times where you'll like run across people on a trail and you'll have just like a cordial hello and goodbye. But like if you're going in the same direction, sometimes you end up just like meeting up and getting to talking. And then you kind of like through happenstance a lot of the time just stay together for a little while and that's like the beauty of like being in the national parks is like that kind of um inclusion and that cordialness that we don't always get out there in the real world i I find it's true it's true i feel i hope that after this when we can all return to being together that there's a little bit more of that right i don't know about that (laughs) I'm not That's such a negative Nancy over here. <laughs> don't you, you know just, like, that is my like in the corner with your cigarettes going? <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen. It's Sister Rulebuck. She's here. She's real. She is. She's S- real and bitter. <laughs> Sister Rule. Rule- Sister she's Rule- real Buck and she's bitter. And her sidekick, negative Nancy. <laughs> I'm a devil act. <laughs> no, but seriously, sometimes your sister rule book and sometimes you're the negative Nancy. Yeah. Sometimes they overlap. It's like a Venn diagram. <laughs> and sometimes I'm hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for adventure, I want to follow on the trail Or get a little lost and let the wind fill my sails Get up when the stars still fill the sky, don't wake the sun There's so much to be done, and the day has just begun Go where the postcards are real, you can feel You can open your eyes, and open your heart when you gaze at the National Park. At the National Park. At the National Park. Follow you, I'll follow you there. Hi, and welcome to Gaze at the National Parks, the podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Dusty. And if you are listening to this episode, then you have come to our second episode in Capitol Reef National Park. As a little bit of a refresher from episode 41, uh, we hiked on the Cassidy Arch Trail. Um, We also talked a lot about getting to Capitol Reef and driving in from Colorado. We also mentioned starting on the Grand Wash and then working our way up to the Cassidy Arch Trail. And the Cassidy Arch is a beautiful trail. It's kind of got everything that you kind of want in a trail. It's got enough challenge. It's got total exposure to the sun, but also just like vast, beautiful things in the distance at every step of the way. Yeah, yeah. Dead trees for Mike. Shirtless men for Mike and Dusty. (laughs) It had it all. (laughs) It had it all. Right. It had it all. Right. So there's that part of Cassidy Arch where like Cassidy Arch is something you have to like see from above. Like it's a thing that exists down into this. It's like a bowl. Right. And you have to like hike out to like the far edge of the bowl and then like walk around it to see inside of Cassidy Arch. We were at the slanted part up top. We had just, you know, finished up. We did not go out to the skinny area. The arch itself, the bridge of the arch. Terrifying. Mm -hmm. We did not go out there, but we just sat and took it in and we were like, okay, well, where do we go next? And that's where we're picking up today. Right. 
So after, you know, doing some peanut butter sandwich snacking and like just taking it all in, because it is a beautiful spot um, to take not only Cassidy Arch in, but the view, we made our way back. Now, Cassidy Arch is kind of a there and back. I, I believe it's a full three miles there and back from like the Grand Wash parking area. Along the way, and we had mentioned this, um, there is a juncture point of sorts, and that juncture point will take you on another trail, and that trail is the Frying Pan Trail. We started our walk backward along the hike that we had already come out, and that was probably about maybe a quarter of the way back to the parking area. So we got to experience all of that, like adult jungle jimmy, climbing over things, wide, slopey rock areas that we were experiencing on the way out, but in reverse, which was kind of nice to see things like backwards because you don't always get that opportunity. I feel like sometimes people think that's boring, but it's such a different perspective to walk backwards on a hike. So this was really nice. At the time, I was thinking about like loops and there and back trails. I'm always a big fan of both, but I like a there and back because you aren't seeing the same thing when you go back. You know? No, no, not at all. You are getting a totally different experience, yeah. actually. It was fun to make that little bit of a double back. When you get to the juncture point, um, there's a sign <clears throat> that basically says back to Grand Washington parking area and then to to the right, and then to the left, it's three miles to Cohab Canyon. You know, we just make our left turn and basically have like a pretty gentle slope to go up to start. But then that quickly, we gain a little bit more elevation here. Not that far as we've made the turn onto this trail, do we like see an older gentleman who's coming down? And we have like a very brief conversation with him, um, just like, you know, he asked where we were headed. We were like, oh, we're going to head, you know, through the frying pan and then try to figure out our day from there. And he talked to us for a minute or two and then we headed on our way. I believe we had passed him like when we were coming up to Cassidy Arch. We had passed by him and his companion like on our way up to Cassidy Arch. Right. Well, we passed a lot of people that were coming out with us. Yeah. They did not go to Cassidy Arch. They had turned to head toward the frying pan trail. Right. While we had gone left to do Cassidy Arch. He was coming back. He'd gone down the frying pan trail for a little bit, and then he'd come back. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I wonder where his companion is. His companion. <laughs> right. I just knew he was with someone else right. at the time. Right. So we eventually pass him and, and head up, and we're kind of like winding on the trail up along this kind of rock edge, this rock face. We stopped a few times to take some photos because... Again, this is sort of like you're viewing from the way you're headed up, you're kind of like off to your left is everything that we just saw from Cassidy Arch, like in that whole area. But we are getting like a, an aerial perspective of it now because we, you know, have gained some elevation at this point. So we really got to, you know, see further down. And it is absolutely breathtaking. Right. Like everything in Capitol Reef. Every time you turn around in Capitol Reef, you're just looking at the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Capitol Reef is, as we have mentioned, in Utah. So it is a lot of red rock and a lot of mesas and a lot of earth formations that are very quintessentially Southwest. Mm -hmm. In the same way that Sedona is so quintessentially Southwest, so is Capitol Reef. Right. It's just spectacularly desert, red rock playground. Right, Utah, who At knew? all times. Right. So we continue to climb up this elevated ramp up the edge of this cliff face. As we come around the corner, we stop and there is a woman that's like right there. She had like paused and she was kind of looking out over everything. We just started to have a conversation with her, same as we had talked with the other gentleman that we had passed further down the and way. And I recognized her as being with the gentleman from before, his companion. <laughs> his companion, <laughs> right. Look at you being, you know, sensible and not assigning roles to people. I don't know what their relationship right, is. Right. But we found out that her name was Susanna and that we had actually just passed her husband who was headed back to the Grand Wash and then out that way. Um, that he he was actually hiking a different route from her that day while she was headed back to the RV um, that they had brought with them to Capitol Reef. Little did we know that Susanna would soon become a beautiful hiking friend. And with that, let's take our first break. 
I, I think I have some like categories for us to think about for this buddy comedy tropes film. So I have some things to give you as far as like categories. Do you want you? You can give me things. <laughs> Is yes. that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Okay, and then, and then I we, you can give toss them back to me. The same thing can give you things. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can just put this in too. I, I well can give you things. <laughs> <laughs> I miss um, you. I know I miss you too. <laughs> okay, we're playing tropes. Tropes. This is a game we play on the trail all the time, right. where we sort of like take a genre of something, usually film. Yeah, but I feel like we could also do like mystery novel, sure, or trashy romance mm-hmm. novel. That would be really fun. Telenovela. Too. Horror movie is oh one we God. haven't done yet. No, we have, but we've come up with many a horror movie. <laughs> we've written actually like two horror movies um, while yes, we, we were waiting for an Avis car one time. Yes, we did. So we talk so. about things all the time. Okay, so this is... Your buddy comedy film. So I'm going to give you a few things that I need you to think about, and you're okay. going to give me some answers, okay? So Great. one, the time of your life that this would be taking place at. This would be the, that time after college. Okay. Um, I need an event from you that this film centers around. Get, get, getting home for the holidays and being broke. Great. Like wanting to go home for the holidays but being broke. Great. I need your occupation at the time and I need you to tell me about your boss. Like I need, um, I need your boss's personality type. Oh, okay. Your occupation and My boss's personality. My occupation at the time would mm-hmm. be working... At the gap, mm-hmm. and my boss would be this relentlessly athletic woman who tans constantly <laughs> and runs the store like it is the infantry. Mm. I need a love interest and I need a zany pet of some sort that you might have. Okay. Like an atypical pet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Because um, I feel well, like the, that's like buddy comedy, you know. Totally. Yeah. The love interest would be... Which is always like um, the B story, the love interest and the buddy always. comedy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The person who works at the cafe next to the Gap. Great. And then the weird pet mm-hmm. would be a chicken named Belina. <laughs> And the last thing is, who's the buddy? That's obvious. I have to, like, you know. You can also pick an actor for your love interest, too. And your boss. I should have said that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So for my love interest, it would be Dylan McDermott. <laughs> 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 my boss would be played by Tilda Swinton. Of course she would. And your buddy. Mm-hmm. And my buddy would be Keegan Michael Key. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. What would the title of your film be? It would be Hitchhikers. Oh, okay. Great. I think that would be the film. That might be a film title already, but Probably. I don't Probably, yeah. It would be about how we hitchhiked all the way to get, you know, home for the holidays. Home for the holidays. Home for the holidays. <laughs> Great. Tropes. Tropes. Buddy comedy Thanks. edition. So Susanna instantly became a hiking friend. Oh, and yeah. And we started hiking the Frying Pan Trail along with her. We talked to her about what she was doing in Capitol Reef. And mm-hmm. she said they had brought their RV and that they'd come in RV here. There's a period of time during the year where they spend in different places. Right. I want to say they were from Oregon. They were both retired. So they were kind of living the RV life, but only, like you said, for part of the year. The rest of the year, they spent their time at home. But she really did give us a lot to think about and like wonder lust over oh yeah like we're in capital reef like every april or october if we're not here in april and i'm like oh if only if only yeah, there was so much beauty in that statement we asked her you love capital reef so much and capital reef is one of the most beautiful places we've ever seen mm-hmm. why do the books say that you can skip it. And what did she say? She was like, oh, I think that's the conspiracy (laughs) to get people to not come because I think it is this little tiny gem that people do tend to avoid because you do have, you know, Zion and Bryce to the west and you do have Canyonlands, which is vast and arches to the east. And so here's little Capitol Reef that's out of the way if you're trying to hit all the parks 
why not skip it? And so she's like, it's kind of like a best kept secret. And she said, probably whoever wrote those books yeah. loves Capital Reef yeah. and wants to keep it a secret. Yeah, and we don't blame them for that. So it's terrible. Don't go there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Awful. No need to go there at all. Never. It stinks. <laughs> 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 I remember asking you at this time, why is why is this trail called the frying pan? Because it's like direct sunlight the whole time. Yeah. And it's just hot. Yeah. And so like we're hiking along and um, it is relatively flat. Yeah, we're in this section where it's pretty flat and open, but there are these giant boulders every now and again. And then there are these small, like achievable mesa sections on top of this flat section that we're on. But it's also very sandy up here. Eventually we hit the slick rock again as we continue to plod along. But there's not a lot of vegetation. If there are trees, they're mostly dead which, you know, is a thrill for me, but not for anything that's trying to gain shade. We're not even in the thick of it yet, but we are in the direct sun. And it's April, but it's hot. I mean, we were very, very warm at this point in the day. We had stopped, I think, at one point to put sunblock on, and Susanna's like, oh, that's a good idea. And she did the same. You know, she was very clearly a serious hiker um, and had hiked a lot. She had a very smart pack on. She had both hiking poles. She had a bandana. She had a big hat. She knew what she was getting into in the hot, hot desert sun in the very open frying pan trail area. And we had told her, you know, what our plan was, which did involve some hitchhiking that we'll get to later. Right. And she was like, oh, well, if you need a ride or something, just come knock on our door. She was That's right. the friendliest. We're in this RV at this campground number. Mm-hmm. Just like walk up, knock on the door, say hello. Yeah, like totally such a genuine, incredibly generous sort of thing. Because we weren't really sure what we were doing at the end when we got to Cohab Canyon and what the route was going to be for the rest of the day because we weren't really sure on timing and and what that was going to look like. But yeah, she did make that very generous offer. Like, we can gladly give you a ride anywhere. And as we're hiking, you know, along the frying pan, it really starts to feel very reminiscent of Devil's Garden and Arches. There are some areas where you have to climb over some things. It's not as active, I would say, as Devil's Garden and Arches, but the scenery is very reminiscent where you have these, like, fins that are kind of coming in at all angles and this didn't excite you at all no i was not not excited it devastated you (laughs) no i was sitting in the corner smoking my cigarettes (laughs) (laughs) and crying about how this doesn't align with your fantasy Mm -hmm. yep that's it so lack um, of fantasy achievement (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i loved this trail it was long Looking at the map, I was like, oh, this won't be too bad. It's a couple of miles. Yeah. And like we're walking and walking. And then it's like, we are still walking and walking. Yeah. And then, oh, goodness, we are still walking and walking. And there were a couple of times where we were like, oh, yeah, that must be Coab Canyon up there. Oh, no, it's not. Nope, that's not it. Oh, that must be it. Up way up there. Nope, that's not it either. <laughs> right. And to the point where it finally got a little bit like, can let's get the map. The map was like sort of to scale and the map had some of the landforms inside of this trail on it, but it mainly just had the line to tell you that this is the frying pan trail and sort of the general direction. Across. Right, right. Eventually, like we, you know, we do pass a few people coming the opposite way um, from us, but we start to descend down you know, we're at this plateau sort of high area. And then we know that by going down, that we're going to have to come back up and out most likely eventually. But we do decide, you know, we do start to descend down. And honestly, like, you kind of are in this giant, I can't even say that it's a canyon. It just like is the sunken in area of Capitol Reef that is I would assume the main part of the frying pan or why it got its name. But you're way at the top. Right. Like above on top of uh, like a mesa. Right. But you are seeing these incredible, crazy rock formations all the way around you. As we're descending, we are basically at the edges of rock faces. It's not super narrow, but it's narrow enough that you want to stay close to the wall. There would probably be enough space if someone wanted to come up and pass you the other way that you'd be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, I just remember being wowed the entire way down into this, like, 
this lower area of the trail. It was incredible. You And uh, this is where you sort of get some shade too, depending on like if you're against a rock face and the way that the sun is angled. But really, we were probably here close to noon. So you weren't really getting too much shade. Like it was like high sun at this point. But if the rock was like overhangy enough, then you might get a little bit of that that shadow coming down on you. Um, but for the most part, we were in full sun here. Yeah, we were in full sun the whole time. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is why they call the frying pan. It was hot, but I was living for it. Mm-hmm. I love the heat. Mm-hmm. I could hike in the heat all day long. Right. The other thing is My eczema skin and the desert get along very beautifully. (laughs) Hiking in desert is my favorite thing. Yeah, it doesn't irritate my skin at all to to hike out there. I always love that. I didn't realize we were running a Clearasil ad here. If Clearasil only works, yeah. (laughs) If we want to run an Aveeno ad, then we can talk about that. Um, Right. But yeah, so I remember coming into this boulder garden, essentially, Mm. like that we were in, in this sort of what is probably the frying pan section of the frying pan. So um, you have what I will call like the long walk and then this boulder garden. We had to start ascending up some boulders. Yeah. We make our way out of this boulder garden area. We are brought to a part where we're like hiking along edges and on top of boulders. We just have yet to see Cohab Canyon. And at some point we were like, surely it's got to be up there sometime soon. And with that, let's take our next break. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Drag Queen Corner. Yes, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between, please welcome to the stage, Kat, Anna, Hot and Roof. Hot and Roof. Hot and Roof. <laughs> it's a German name. Her last name, name is Hot and Roof, <laughs> or Hot and Roof, depending, yeah. but we pronounce it Hot and Roof. Hot and Roof, exactly. Yes, she's inspired by the frying pan and mm-hmm, how hot it was. Mm-hmm. And also right? the musical Cat on a Hot and Roof. It's or not a musical play. Girl. It is a play <laughs> by Tennessee Williams. Yeah. But I can only imagine what the musical would be. There would probably be a song called No Neck Monsters. <laughs> there would be a love song that Maggie and Brick both sing to Skipper. I mean, I could go on for days. The people, the deep cut fans of Tennessee Williams will, I hope, appreciate those comments Mm -hmm. I just made. But anyway, who is Kat Anna Hottenroof? Uh, Well, she's just living her desert life. I feel like she's like bohemian desert chic. Cowboy boots, a hint of saloon, (laughs) and I'm sold. (laughs) (laughs) Give me a ballet skirt and a hint of saloon and I'm on board. Right. Right. Another Devil Wears Prada reference. How many can I make? All Too of many. Them. <laughs> Don't get me started. I can see this like a rugged Casey Musgraves mm. sort of inspiration mm. here. Like maybe she's a musician. I feel like I also am getting the um, the Piper Parabo um, Coyote Ugly Coyote Ugly vibe. <laughs> uh, maybe yes. just all of the women of Coyote Ugly as an yes. amalgamation. Like yes, and just like feeling her barmaid, like gritty, but like you know, can totally handle herself. And and like, is German, yeah, and is German, hot and, and um, which means I think she's, I think her um lip sync song would have to be Can't Fight the Moonlight. (laughs) Right? Right? Yeah, I think so. Why not? Right, exactly. She probably has like a ring that would like open a beer bottle. Right, of course. She's multitasking all the way. All the way. Mm Mm-hmm. All the way. She probably has like a Hot and Roof. Hot and Roof beer is, she probably has a beer brand called Hot and Roof. Hot and Roof. I do feel like, so she's, you know, She's a little coyote ugly, but she's also like a little Oktoberfest kind of like mixed together. Mm, do those mix? I don't know. I feel like do that they? might be like a hat wearing a hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Well, maybe I she's mean, just blonde with like maybe she braids, maybe she leans into Oktoberfest right in October. Right. That's her like October wear. Right. October and wear. She has her you know rest of the year. Dress up. Did outfits. you say Piper Parabo? Yeah, Was Piper Parabo. Right. Yeah. Uh, remember her? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, please welcome to the stage, Kat Anna Hottenroof. So we're continuing through this maze of rocks, and um, finally we run into this endless group. It was like of, forty or fifty. It was people. like forty or fifty. It was like a clown car, mm-hmm. right? And they were turning the corner, and like we like moved out of the way for them to take the trail, and um, it, they just kept coming. Right. They were all teenagers. Yeah. And it was clear like they were all like high school students, but I think they were French. Yeah, I think so as well. We were like, oh, finally, we see people coming from this direction. Yeah. And so we were like, hey, how long have you guys been walking? And they were like, maybe like a half an hour, you know, 45 Mm -hmm. minutes. How about you guys? And we were like, about two hours. Yeah. Like you're going to have to, it's going to take you about two hours to get to Cassidy Arch. And they were like, Oh, like their eyes got huge. Yeah. And they were just like, well, they okay. weren't really dressed for hiking either. Like, I think there were some people in jeans. It was a very strange arrangement of, um, like hiking gear on and like, didn't look like everybody had water with them. No one really had bags. It was kind of like, Hey, we got out of the bus just to see what was here. And like, we're going to now we're hiking a a trail suddenly, (laughs) you know what I mean? And the dead heat of the day. And part of me wants to say trails are yours whenever you want them. But being prepared for a trail is also a great idea. It seems that, yeah, it didn't look like that had been on their agenda. No. You know, to do like a long walking hike. No, not at all. No, I would have encouraged that bus to go to where we parked and then they could have hiked up to Cassidy Arch, the 1.3 miles. Yeah, I guess. That would have been tight though, I feel like, for that bus on that like rugged road too. Oh, yeah, I don't want to be on that bus. No. On that road. No. No, thank you. But um, after the clown car passed and we were able to continue kind of walking, um, it really wasn't that much further that You know, we had to end up hiking to then get to that branch off for Cohab Canyon. Like, I think, you know, sometimes when we hike, we misjudge our distances a little bit. So um, I I feel like they were coming down at this point. We were headed up. So we knew we had to be getting close. And also Susanna had hiked this before. So she was like, yeah, we're not not all that far from where we're at or where we need to be. So we reached the branch off. We talked to Susanna you know, for the last time. And she was, you know, she just re-offered the offer she made earlier. Just, hey, if you need me, this is where we're at. By all means, we'd be happy to give you a ride back to where you need to go. Don't hesitate to ask sort of thing. And she heads off to the left. um, And we actually head towards the right. The frying pan trail kind of T-bones into Coab Canyon. So um, we are able to head to the right We kind of have to head down first into the canyon, and we are on, like, again, against this wall. But the wall, I remember, had all these, like, circular perforations in it. Do you remember, like, you took a lot of photos of it, too? I do. It almost looked like um, it was just so wind-worn, but it almost looked like birds could have made nests there. Before we actually headed down anywhere, we sort of needed to decide what we wanted to do and how we were going to go. Yes. Which way are we going to go once we, like get to the bottom of Coop Canyon. Right. So there was the possibility for us to, you know, head towards the campground, head with head towards it with Susanna. Um, and that would allow us to see the petroglyphs that are there along the roadway. Um, and, you know, we knew we were going to have to hike along the road at some point to get back to the car. So if we did that, it would just mean that it was a longer hike back because the road would be longer. Or we could cut to the right and, you know, hike the road a little shorter or a little sooner and go back and see the petroglyphs at some other point. And I think at this point, you know, we, I think when we kind of stopped here for a minute, we also like snacked up a little too, like once Mm -hmm. Susanna left. And we also had the map, which gave us a pretty good idea of distance along the roadway and then distance along the Grand Wash, which is what we were going to have to do to get back to the car. And we knew how long it just took us to kind of hike what we hiked. So knowing that we had you know, one other big trail in mind for the rest of the day, we kind of decided to to make our lives a little shorter. And so we banked to the right and headed down um, into the canyon that way. The top of the mesa from the road is not like the furthest, but as we were walking, we like had not been able to see the road for a long time. Occasionally you could hear something. Finally, we were like, oh, 
there's the road. Right. There are these switchbacks that go up the side of the wall that we had to go down. And that is what brought us back to the ground. Yeah. Well, we had seen power lines too. So that gave us some sort of indicator that we were close as well. Right. We got to the road and I was like, oh, wow. That like took way longer than I thought. Yeah. 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 It was great, but that took way longer than I thought. Yeah. But now we had to make a choice here. And um, there were definitely some things that we wanted to do along the road. But we also knew that we had to get back to the Grand Wash, which was now miles and miles down the road. We had to consider the idea of hitchhiking. Let's put the frying pan on the Karen Stone scale. On a scale of one to Yosemite Falls, <laughs> where do you put the frying pan? Um, I'm going to give it a five. I feel like it's a good middle of the road trail. I feel like I could err towards six too, but I, I didn't think it was terribly hard. It was just longer than I thought and also just a lot hotter than I think we thought it was going to be because we were in the open sun for as long as we were. But I found it to be a lot of fun and I, I didn't find it incredibly challenging other than the fact that it was long agreed you know like i kind of want to like do the reverse next time we go to capitol reef which Mm. is like start on the end of the frying pan that we came out of and hike all the way to cassidy arch and then back up and make it around to grand wash yeah that would be really fun yeah and maybe find a hitchhiker (laughs) and maybe find a hitchhiker or somebody to you know help us hitch but that'll be for another episode (laughs) for another episode right but um i would i agree with you i'm gonna give it a five because the actual sort of doing like the incline here wasn't too bad it was mainly just like the length in the heat is what yeah. gave makes me, you know, think five. And which is why it's called the frying pan. <laughs> and there we go. Now let's end this episode with some Jeopardy. Great. All right, Mike, do you want to start with your category today or do you want me to start with mine? Um, I'll go ahead and start. My go category is called A Walk to Remember. So it's not <laughs> it's not There's the Mandy Morphin. song film. that's inside. No. No. Mm-mm. Of my soul. Um, this is about it's the one <laughs> that I've tried to write over and over again. Now you know how I feel when you just. I keep know. Singing. I get it. I stopped to let you have your moment. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Letting, I'm awake letting you have your in moment. The it's important. Infinite cold. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Great. <laughs> so, in a walk to remember, I'm going to describe a famous lengthy walk in America, and you need to name that walk. Oh my God, I'm ready. Great. All right. Um, a walk to remember for 100. While this is neither the oldest nor the longest of U.S. trails, it is held in high regard because of its user friendliness and ease. Passing through 14 states, this trail will change your life and will take at least five months to complete. What is the Appalachian Trail? That is correct. Great. A walk to remember for 200. This 296-mile trail, which can be completed in about a month, follows a ridge on the northwest side of this largest lake in North America. And it also holds that lake's name. What is the Superior Trail? That's correct. Very good. Oh, I've never even heard of that. Well, now you have. <laughs> we should we should do that. That sure. would be fun. Great. I'm so down. A walk to remember for 200, or 300, I'm sorry. This 1,200-mile trail through Wisconsin is one that shows the beauty of the state which was formed by glaciers of a bygone era. Walk the path of the woolly mammoths on this aptly named trail, which will take you through several state parks wilderness areas, and ancient history. What is the fossil trail? No. That's all I got. I don't know. Formed by glaciers in a bygone era. What is the what is the Ice Age trail? Correct. Very good. Oh, great. There you go. Great. Good there clue. Go. Good clue. All right. Um, a walk to remember for 400. This 210-mile hike takes you through three California national parks and will definitely require tent hiking. While you can gather provisions along the way in small towns and resorts, there is at least a 10-day stretch of wilderness where you must scrutinizingly plan that you have enough food to last. 
What is Reese Witherspoon in Wild? Incorrect. It's not Pacific Crest Trail? Mm-mm. Huh. Pacific Crest is really long. This is a trail. That's what I thought. This is a shorter trail. Um, Three national is, parks. What is the... Um, we were actually on it for a minute in it, Yosemite. It's not the John Muir Trail. It is the John it Muir Trail. It is the John Muir Trail. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. Okay, great. Great. And last, what is our last week's trail mix? <laughs> yeah, right. And last but not least, this 3,100 mile trail will take you at least six months to complete and has hazards including summer lightning, deep snow, and encounters with bears. Not only that, but only about 70% of the trail is completed and marked, making finding the trail sometimes difficult as you pass along the Rockies from Canada to Mexico or vice versa. Is this the Pacific Crest Trail? No. No? I didn't think so. Oh, I don't know the name of this trail. What is the Continental Divide Trail? Oh, all right. And it's like apparently like a handful of people do it a year. Like they're very small amounts. Mm. The way that it was described is that you should get a PhD in hiking if you are able to complete this trail. Huh. Interesting. A walk to remember. A walk to remember. I'm really fascinated by like, you said there's a 10 day stretch of... A 10 day stretch of wilderness in the John Muir Trail. I think that's probably through... it. So it starts in Yosemite and ends at Mount Whitney. So I think that's probably through um, Sequoia or Kings Canyon. Remember it like kind of skirts along like... We oh, looked yeah. at it on the map. But you like, like, you won't have any... You can't... St- you you need to make sure you've packed enough food because like there's nowhere to stop to get anything. And what about water? Well, I guess you... Then you probably bring iodine tablets, I would assume. I guess so. Or have like a so life the, So wait, there, it's a... You said it's a... St- 10 mile stretch or 10 days? 10 day stretch of the 210 10 day stretch mm-hmm. of the 210 miles which takes you i think about a month probably to do got i would it. imagine got it okay are you ready for my category i am my category is called capital city triple rhyme time oh great are you ready i am okay here we go <laughs> these capital cities in these answers are only american state capital cities american state got it great okay if you were to buy a dress shoe in the capital of delaware that did not feature a penny but rather a three or four leaf variety of this small plant you'd be buying a this it's dover and clover um so dress shoe a dress shoe that doesn't feature a penny Oh, uh, what is a a uh, uh, um, a Dover lo- a clover loafer? Yes, uh, <laughs> great. A Dover clover loafer. Great. Okay, for two hundred. If Lassie were really happy in this capital city of North Carolina, she'd be a this. A jolly Raleigh collie. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. 300. If you were playing a famous card game in the capital city of Alaska and offered the winner only one compliment for their game, you would be giving them a this. <laughs> a Juno Uno Kudo? <laughs> yes! That was perfect. Good job. All right, 400. If you were to take two juicy cuts of meat and fuse them together in the capital of Iowa, you would have this moment. A, a Des Moines tenderloin join? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it, or a Des Moines tenderloin conjoin. Okay. Right. Perfect. Okay. And finally, if you were so enamored and lost in the energy of your mortgage broker while discussing your home in the capital city of Michigan, you might be experiencing this. A romancing, lancing, financing? (laughs) Oh, you're so close. I was looking for an entrancing, lancing, refinancing. Got it. Okay. Beautiful. 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 
This has been Gaze at the National Parks, the podcast. And we're here to remind you to hike early and hike often, and that adventure is always out there. Gaze at the National Parks was created and is hosted by Dustin Ballard and Michael Ryan. To see images from this episode, follow our Instagram at Gaze at the National Parks. To contact us, email us at gazeatthenationalparks at gmail.com. And to find out more about Capitol Reef National Park and the other parks talked about on this show, visit our website, gazeatthenationalparks.com, and that's gaze, G-A-Z-E. All original artwork featured on Instagram and on our website is by Michael Ryan. All original music was written by Dave Seaman and performed by Dave Seaman, Mariella Klinger, and Sean Sklios. Our music producer is Skylar Fortgang. This episode was edited by Dustin Ballard. We would also like to acknowledge while hiking in Capitol Reef National Park that we were on the traditional lands of the Ute, Paiute, Hopi, Navajo, and Zuni people. Tune in next time. Tune in to our next full-length episode all about the Grand Wash Trail in Capitol Reef National Park. Okay, are you ready for yours? Sure, I'm ready. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, so do I need to... I can give you other things. Other you can give me you other than, yeah, what you gave me. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so for your buddy comedy, what sparks the conflict in your story? Um, the death of my grandmother. Great. And what does that involve for you? Like, do you now have to go on a journey because of this? Um, I'm the one that's responsible for setting up her death. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> for setting up her death. Uh, I'm the one that's responsible for planning the funeral. Oh, I see. Yeah. And now, um, what does this make you dread? Oh, everything. <laughs> um, it makes me dread having to um, deal with the only funeral parlor in town that's run by my dun-dun-dun high school bully. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. And um, and so um, who is playing your best friend? Um, my best friend is being played by... Oh, my good friend is being played by Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Mm-hmm. And what is, like, the song that plays in the car that makes the two of you just, like, feel better? Um, uh, uh, junior, Senior, Don't Stop. And then um, what does uh, Kristen Bell's character do at the sort of, like, what do they call the repass afterwards? Yeah, it's a repass. Um, you know, where there's, like, food and mingling. Like, what does she do to keep... What ridiculous thing does she put herself through in order to, like, make you feel like everything's going to be okay? Well, she was in charge of making dessert for the repass, and she accidentally, um, she's also a giant stoner, and she accidentally um, mixed up her batches of brownies. So um, she brings pot brownies to the repass um, accidentally and then realizes it. Great. And so she has to try to swipe them away from people so no one gets, like, high out of their minds. But which character does, in fact, get high out of their minds? Oh, my very straight-laced father. Great. Great. And um, what is, like, what's, like, the spot, the childhood spot that, like, you and Kristen Bell go to when, like, the movie's at its end and you're like, you know what, everything's going to be okay and we have each other? Um... It would be uh, it would be the graveyard because when I was a kid, I lived near a cemetery, and my friends and I would hang out in the cemetery. This is truth, um, yeah. And I wasn't a goth kid, I promise. Well, this is this is reasons why you were negative Nancy sometimes, <laughs> yeah. and sister rule buck. That's right. Well, there we go. There's your buddy comedy, and what's your title? Mm, I want it to be something punny, like. <laughs> something about repass to the future. <laughs> something, 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 repass. Um, hang on. What if your last name is Reston and the, oh. movie, the title is Rest in Peace? I like that. I'll take it. Rest in Peace. There you go. <laughs>